Hello and welcome to the Plant Your Seed to Transformation podcast show. I am coach and author Donna Marie, and I'm so grateful to have your attention to our show. The show is all about transformation. We specifically delve deeply, as deeply as we can, into topics concerning women, women leaders. And today we have an awesome woman woman leader named Lynn Frank. Lynn, I'm so grateful that you decided to join me on the show today. How are you doing? I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I'm happy. This is, it's always a nice uh, opportunity when you get to chit chat with another female entrepreneur and reach their audience. It's, it's cool. (laughs) It's a blessing to have you here. Thank you very much for gracing us with your time and your, your, spirit of love towards women. And so um, I definitely want to give you the opportunity to introduce yourself and share about who you are, what you do, who you're doing that for and why. All right. Um, So my sole goal is to empower women. And I would say that started because I um, grew up in after my father passed away, I grew up in an all female home. And so it was my mom and my sisters and the four of us supported each other um, through our similarities and differences, if you could imagine. Um, We grew up to be four completely different uh, independent women. But growing up, I was able to like witness the power of women. And that stuck with me. I don't really think I recognized it as I was growing up. I just thought women could do whatever women wanted to do. Um, And then through grade school, I realized that I had to always prove myself. So I was constantly challenging the boys, wanted to be as tough as them, run fast as them, um, because I thought my self-worth depended on being as good as the boys in my class. And I thought I could. So that, that was a positive. At least I, I, was a, I thought that the system made me aware of that. But because I grew up in an all-female home, I really thought I could. So oftentimes I did, but didn't always. Um, And then I went to a all girls Catholic high school and again um, was surrounded by all women. Um, And it wasn't until my like late, it was great called grade 13 back then where the boys came into the school. Actually, they came in earlier than that. The schools amalgamated Mm -hmm. and I'm not kidding you in a day the difference in the classrooms was heartbreaking my quiet sisters who spoke and would participate immediately withdrew from participating in class of course there were some girls with mirrors but not like this all of a sudden mirrors in the lockers and I was telling my girlfriend the other day and she reminded me on the first day that the boys, you know, came into the girls school, um, there was a fight between two girls over a boy. And it's not that there was never conflict, um, you know, girl to girl, woman to woman, um, because that's true and real, but not like this. It was different. And so there again was this example. um, And I felt, you know, Lucky that I had the upworking that I did, that I still participated in class, but like noticed and felt bad for my sisters who weren't being active learners like they were. Um, And then I went to high school or university. Um, I started traveling and that's when I saw like, that's when I really started to begin to recognize my privilege and understand whoa, everything I have access to and thought, okay, then this midlife crisis came and I was like, yeah, here I am, you know, this white woman sitting in privilege. What am I doing? What is my social responsibility? What do I need to do so that all women feel empowered? 
And that led me to uh, what I'm doing now. So Igniting Community is a, it started off as a Facebook group where female entrepreneurs share their like knowledge or stories, um, their expertise in like little sparks of truth. And so it's got this win-win. So the female entrepreneurs can showcase what they're doing almost not in like an infomercial way at all, but it's still, you know, promoting what they're doing. And then women um, from any um, socioeconomic background, because it's free, can show up and have access to tools and practices that they could use to empower themselves and become whoever it is and do whatever it is that they want to do. So we're a group of 1,200 women, and we recently moved um, to uh, YouTube. So there are 11 female entrepreneurs who are creating videos, some from Chile, Costa Rica, Canada, the States. We're uh, in the, the goal for me. So we've only been on YouTube like two months, three months now. But my goal is um, no matter who you are, you show up on Igniting Community and you either hear your story or you see yourself in somebody else. I want this to be the safe space that women desperately need where they can just, you know, learn something and feel accepted because, um, you know, we carry a lot of shame and guilt and that often comes, now I'm rambling, sorry. Just stop me at any time. Keep I going, go keep going. There. Talk about that shame and guilt. That's something we, we talk about here. Yeah, yeah. So especially if I, you know, we were talking earlier, you know, I grew up Roman Catholic and so you were, mm. you felt guilty about a lot and you feared you know, the devil. And um, that was used as a way to control your, you know, your actions or your behavior. But unfortunately, that fear and shame also, not that it was rightly placed within religion, but it, it's now kind of um, attached to a lot of social expectations. So that if you don't meet something, you are shamed in not meeting whatever it is society thought you should do. And women, you know, I did a video last week on mother guilt. Like mm. how heavy is that for those of you who have children? I'm not sure, but if you do, and if you don't, uh, the video still gives you an idea of what your sisters are living. Your, what your, you know, uh, if you've got a sister or your friend who has a child, you're not experiencing that yourself. Um, chances are you're experiencing guilt about something else. Maybe it's not having the children. It's like, it's a lose-lose. We can't win, you know? And uh, I'm trying my best through this diverse group to show women that you can do whatever you want. You just have to be aware of the systems that have been created intentionally to deny you access to your power. So if you could wake up and name and see the system, then you have the power to reject it and choose what works for you. Yeah. Because every social norm we follow is an idea. It's just an idea that someone thought was good. And right now, you know, it, it's men, the patriarchy. So all of whatever served them best became the right idea. Yeah. And that's what we're following right now. Yeah. And a, a, lot of, a lot of times what we really want, we're told, oh, you shouldn't want that. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, and, and by our churches. Mm -hmm. And by society in general, like there is an acculturation amongst mothers and daughters. Yeah. There's an acculturation amongst just women in general, uh, be it a, a female teacher, um, a female minister at a church. There's an acculturation that happens within communities, within um, ethnicities, cultures, whatever. Yeah. There are things that happen that are not good. And we don't know that because it's all we know, right? Yeah. Until we step outside of the normal uh, places. 
And when you go other places, you find out it doesn't have to be that way. I was always told it needed to be this way. You had to wear white only in spring. <laughs> I or followed summer. that rule too. <laughs> right, right. Now, my mom was raised Catholic, right? Okay. She went to um, a Catholic school, um, high school and, in Indiana, and she uh, brought a lot of that into her parenting, brought a lot of that shame and guilt and things. Mm-hmm. You should do this. You should do that. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. And then she had me. <laughs> and I have not followed a lot of those things that she wanted me to follow. And it, I think it, I always baffled her, right? Because it just didn't fit into that little mold that she thought she was supposed to create for me, right? And so as parents, as mothers, um, many times we just perpetuate whatever we were told it was supposed to be like. But then, as you were saying, how you got into a certain age and you were like, okay, I'm going to get rid of that little idea there. Let's get rid of that one. And I want to embrace this one. So. As you come into understanding who you are, and for me, whose you are, I know that I'm a child of God. I know that he is the one that directs my life and orders my steps. And I choose to let him order my steps. But part of my process has been starting to see where other people or systems tried to come in and twist it for mm-hmm. their purposes yeah. and their, for their design. And I had to learn how to set boundaries and say, no, that is not what God has for me. I don't care what what you say. You pray God all you want, but he's telling me what he wants me to do. No, I'm not going to sit back and, and listen to other people trying to tell me what they think I should do when I can hear from God for myself. And I know that other people, I know that many people don't understand what that means, hearing from God, right? And other people may have another, another uh, point of view about that or how to say that. But I simply mean that I know that in my heart of hearts, the desires in my heart, the good things in my heart, I know that comes from God. I'm confident about that. I know that. And I'm not going to let somebody else come in and ruin what he started in me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, you know, when you're hearing God, is it in those, you know, like moments of silence? Because that's, even though, you know, I'm I'm talking to God, but I'm also talking to, you know, a female mother Gaia presence, but I have a feeling our prayers or the way we do it. It's, it's, you hear it in the stillness when I'm, I'm being, but you gotta get still. You gotta get still. That's so many of us don't ever take the time to be still. Yeah. That's your heart. Your heart will show you Mm -hmm. your body knows the, the, the only, not the only, but one of the biggest things is do we have the courage to hear what we're supposed to hear because a lot of times we're afraid yes and uh and then when we hear it are are we do we have the courage to to step forward and what helps me with that is this little thing i've coined i just um intentional interruptions Mm -hmm. so before making a decision, because like how many times do we make a decision based on, you know, well, we're supposed to say yes, or we don't want to be rude. We want to be polite. So we're like, sure. Yeah. But deep down your body tried to tell you it like, you know, something in your stomach or you felt it in your neck and you, you knew you didn't really want to say yes. And your intuition in your body was trying to guide you, or maybe it was God saying, Hey, Hey, but you say yes anyway, because you don't want to be uncomfortable in that moment. And so I would encourage your audience to do this little thing, an intentional interruption, just hold it, you know, and say something like, Hey, that sounds really interesting. Let me think about that. 
Ooh, good one. Can I get back to you? And don't reply. Don't answer. Be really respectful. And then go in that, Donna, that silence you were talking about. And then you sit and you go, okay, how will this serve me? What does this look like in my life? Do I want to say yes? Or how does it serve me if I say no? And, and you sit and you will feel it. You will know whether it's, you know, God telling you in your heart or your body in your gut, you will know what the right answer is. Do you have the courage to follow through? Right. That's yeah. And also Women, we need so to do that. Ladies who are listening, don't be afraid. Own your power. You can say no. Let me think about it. You don't have to answer right away. That 24 hour rule exists for you to use it. Mm -hmm. Do not get caught up in something you don't want to do mm -hmm. because you're taking up space in your body that is meant for something else. And sometimes it's about being afraid to take the risk when we do want yeah. to do something being mm -hmm. afraid of what other people are going to think totally. if we say yes to something that's yeah. different than what the expectation has been the norm has been in our in our family in our community you know yeah. and so mm -hmm. having that time setting aside that quiet time just to be alone mm -hmm. and just think now me personally i love my car as okay. one of those places, right? Yeah. That's one of the greatest places to really just get quiet and just hear. Turn mm -hmm. off the radio, just be quiet. And um, it really, I mean, I've had some of the, the best clarity of my life from those times. Okay, I'm going to try that because I'm always wanting to be productive and I put on a podcast. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Me too. But, but maybe I should just shut it all down. Okay, I like it. Yeah. Yep. I have some books that I really want to read right now. And I just have been turning off the radio, just turn off mm -hmm. everything, turn everything off and give myself permission to just sit in silence. Well, the silence that you can get in a car is not always yeah. that, that quiet because of whatever, wherever you're at. But yeah. But it it's also stillness in the mind, right? Like even if you're, yeah, you're not, you're out of your head. You're just, yeah, quiet. And I think that can help so many women who don't, they feel weird when it gets quiet. They don't, they feel like something's wrong if they have that time to just be quiet. But it's okay, especially if you're like a mom and have littles. When you have littles, there's so much noise. All the, oh my gosh, I remember those years. Now I have teenagers and young adults. And so now it's like, we're quiet all the time. It's <laughs> quiet. It's always quiet, you know. <laughs> but when you have littles, it's always loud. Lots of noises, lots of activity. If you have kids like mine, at least I have a, a son who is very busy. Very busy. Oh my goodness, that boy. He kept everything very lively here. Okay. He's away <laughs> at college now. But um, yeah, you have to give yourself permission. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Leave the kids at home yeah. with dad, babysitter, grandma, whatever. And you get in your car and you go somewhere. And you could just sit in the car at a park or get out in the car and walk at the park, whatever. It's okay. Give yourself permission to be alone and to be quiet. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You know what, Donna, in my book, you know, first I talk a bit about the patriarchy and masculine and feminine energy and the, the need for both and balance. But the next thing I talk about is how to create me time because without it, we'll, women won't achieve, we won't, we won't achieve anything else. And you're right. My suggestion for women with small kids, you need to leave. You need to leave the house because they will find you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Just it go. doesn't matter where you go. They will pop up. Just go. Knock, knock. Mommy. Go Mommy. to your favorite coffee shop. You know, just, just long enough to grab a coffee. You don't have to be there for hours, 30 minutes. I started my me time with 10 minutes and I didn't know what to do. Sometimes I would fall asleep you know, unsure of what I should be doing. But 
that quick. And for me, it was easier when I started, my kids were older. Um, and, um, I would, you know, tell them, you know, when the doors are shut, you know, in this, you know, the scarf is on the handle, had a, a different meaning here at my house. Um, you can't come in. And it's amazing once you do, if you're consistent, ladies, be consistent because your children or your partner or whoever it is, your roommates, they'll learn that you're serious about it. It's when you're inconsistent that then they don't take it seriously. But if you could commit, ladies, the people around you will go, okay, this is important to her. I'm, I'm really going to like, let her be, yeah. but it, 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 you, you are responsible for creating that routine or that ritual, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Creating rituals, routines, mm -hmm. um, a schedule. There's nothing wrong with the schedule. There's nope. nothing wrong with that. And so just a, a pro tip, use yeah. a digital calendar, stop relying on paper calendars. You're going to you can lose them. You can leave them behind um, when you're out and you need to put something on that calendar and the calendars at home. Yeah. Use a digital calendar. It's always with you. You're not going to forget that phone. Most, most people, most, yeah. especially mothers, we, we have our phones because we need to stay abreast of what's going on with our kids. Right. So we keep our mm -hmm. phones so that we can communicate with our kids. So since you keep your phone all the time, keep your calendar on your phone. And then you can also incorporate other um, systems into that. You can use reminders. So you can use task list yep. apps. There's so many things you can use. On the iPhone, you get a free, you get free um, task list app. It's called Reminder app. Yep. You get a free notes app. It comes with the phone. You don't have to pay anything extra if you have an iPhone. And that is, and actually you can get free apps like that too on any phone. It is so critical to have systems in place to support you in your journey when you have ideas. Um, so let's say that you're trying to be quiet and, but ideas keep popping up in your head or, or I don't uh, know what that's re like. Re reminders, <laughs> reminders of doing laundry or whatever. Put it in your phone and then forget it. Put it in your reminders list, put it in your calendar, wh mm -hmm. whatever works for you. And then you can forget that and you can be quiet. You know, and I call it using procrastination when you're a high achiever. You can actually use procrastination to move your life forward because you can take whatever it is that popped in your head, put it in that list, close the phone, put the phone down and stay present with your loved ones. Instead mm -hmm. of thinking of every little thing that you forgot to do. Oh, I forgot to fix that paragraph in that blog article that I need to publish. <laughs> but you're having dinner with your family. You need to focus on your family, not on that yeah. blog article. <laughs> they need you. They need you yeah. present. And you need to be present with them. So sometimes the quiet is that you got to quiet your mind. If you're like me, sometimes it's about quieting your mind and sometimes using those tools to put stuff down in a digital format so you can find it wherever you need to find it. You don't have to chase around pieces of paper. Yeah. You know, it can save your brain and save your relationships because yeah. then people will know that you're there for them, mm -hmm. you know, and you're paying attention and you're engaging with them. Yeah. And, and for women who say, oh, like my day is so full, like how do you manage me time like Lynn how'd you pull that off because now I'll do an hour right an hour at a time how is it possible and I just say pull out your phone show me how long you were on Facebook and Instagram today <laughs> show me it's embarrassing right like when you actually stop to look at the numbers and I'm like I love you I do I want you to succeed I do not believe you when you tell me you have no me time yeah. It is there where there's a will, there's a way and just getting them to look and go, yeah, that's how much I, you know, spent on social media. And I'm saying 15 minutes of those two hours, I want you in silence, right? Yeah. Like if I'm coaching. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and also I like your idea about scheduling. Often what I will suggest is um, that they 
schedule a time where you are going to do your social media. So ladies, I'm not saying scrap Facebook, scrap Instagram. If that's part of what you do, that's fine. But schedule it in so that you know, all right, at the end of the day or the, whenever it fits in your schedule, you will have that time to peruse all of those goods that you want to look at. And so you don't feel left out of the loop. You're going to have access to all of that information, but rather it be this distraction throughout your day, just chunk it all in one time and spot. And that usually is when you'll find me time. Absolutely. <laughs> That's so, a good one. So in addition to speaking on this topic of, finding that time that quiet time making mm -hmm. that and it's not about finding it's about making it it's your life right mm -hmm. you choose what you want to do with your time yeah don't just pretend like everybody else is taking your time mm -hmm. except for a newborn baby that needs <laughs> to be nursed Everybody else can pretty much be put on a schedule, even little kids that have a hard time going to bed. You can do it. You can do it and you can take control over your own time. But mm -hmm. the other thing, the other um, thing that I wanted to make sure we got around to is this topic of toxic perfectionism. This is something that we talk about in this show because this is something that sometimes it's a little bit more abstract. Sometimes it can be difficult for people to understand what perfectionism is because they need to know what it looks like in their life. It can look mm -hmm. different in different people's life. Like one person, perfectionism can be doing too much. But for another person, perfectionism can actually be becoming stuck or, or, or afraid, numb, yeah. afraid to do anything. So you're just doing nothing. Yeah, that can also be perfectionism. It just depends on the person. How have you seen perfectionism in your own life? Or with, um, is that something that you've addressed with your own self and with the people that you're coaching? I actually for uh, for my own self, I actually have a in my kitchen. Uh, uh, perfectionism is overrated. <laughs> so unless through the lens of what you're saying of doing too much, I am, I do do a lot. So I, I will sit with that and think about that, but I've never considered myself to be a perfectionist. And I, I read on your site about, you know, talking about perfectionism and about, you know, you might write a book and, you know, you get it published and there's errors in it. I was so done with my book that I had decided I was printing it regardless. <laughs> and I knew there were mistakes. I knew it. And I was like, I don't, I, I'm so over it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Life is not perfect. I'm not perfect. This book, and I did, I published it with heirs and I sign it, you know, you, you, the book, sorry, you can't buy the book. It's only when you do my program, but I will sign it perfectly imperfect you know Lynn mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um but I, I would say the biggest thing that I've witnessed through the coaching of women is perfectionism more of what you were saying about getting stuck but it's also connected to fear as well a lot of times so there's fear of war. not being perfect yeah fear of not being perfect yeah so then you don't doing, move mm -hmm. yeah yeah not doing it right you know? And, um, so it, through that lens, I would say that's what I see more common. And, um, it's, it's that conversation I have to have about stepping out of your comfort zone. And then a lot of women, um, go to like worst case scenario, right? So they're, they're stuck. They're worried about not being perfect. Um, and then, they think about what would happen. What if? What they think, yeah, the what ifs, but they go right to worst case scenario. Um, and they've been patterned, right? They've been that train of thought has been in them and they always go. And so it's, is that you? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So it's about breaking that pattern, kind of setting off some, some different neurons and it, uh, creating a different path for yeah. them because the best growth comes out of your comfort zone. 
So yeah, perfectionism, it definitely can, can um, catch people and limit their growth. Right. Yeah. So personal story. I'm the biggest I've ever been in my life. Okay. And so like I'm wearing a sleeveless shirt on camera. Um, This is something, thank you. This is something I decided that I'm not going to change my shirt. I'm not trying to be perfect. I want to show off my little voter sticker because I want people to remember to go vote. I don't care what anybody thinks about my arms. Mm. That's not the point of this. Mm -hmm. The point of this is to help women to understand it's okay to be okay with who Mm -hmm. you are right here, right now. Yeah. I can't change this today. Yeah. I can just make choices today and choices tomorrow and choices the next day. I can't change everything right now. I can't be all perfect right this second, right this moment, but I can get better over time, but I won't get better over time if I'm stuck worried about the past, stuck comparing myself to others, worrying about how other people see Mm -hmm. me, right? And Mm -hmm. so part of my journey out of perfectionism is allowing myself to be who I am and all my imperfections right now and still loving myself despite it all. And that was a lot for me. There was a time when I hated myself Mm. and that's a dangerous place to be in. Especially if you're linking that to body shame. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know one single woman, not one, not one who has not had a season in their life dealing with body shame not one and And. I can sit here right now the heaviest I've been in my life and say that I'm not ashamed I'm grateful to be alive Mm, and have a beautiful functioning body right that enables you to do all the things yeah and I am doing the work to get this Mm -hmm. off but it's not going to happen overnight, right? So I'm going to love myself right now, mm-hmm. period. Yeah. I don't care what anybody thinks. Now, I'm not going to go into unsafe places. And I heard you say earlier how your group is designed to be a safe, your community is designed to be a safe place. Mm-hmm. And that's important for us to know that we have safe spaces we can be I in. know, yes. It's I, so yeah. important. I mm-hmm. don't just go walking up the middle of the road with all of this, because I already know that's not a safe space for me, right? Mm-hmm. But I can go work out in the gym and they actually have a dark room. It's a, it's a theater room. They have a movie on the screen. Oh, and you're I can, kidding. What? Not kidding. I can walk on the treadmill in this dark room with this movie going, I can ignore the movie and just look at my own phone and put my earplugs in, or I can watch the movie and walk in the treadmill. I love it because I don't have anybody gawking at me, right? That's that's a safe space for me. There's nothing wrong with having safe spaces. There is mm-hmm. something wrong with just being stuck in your comfort zone and not being willing to take the risk to get to the things that you do want. Yeah. So having a safe space in the midst of that journey is su- super important. So tell me more about the community that you're building and share with us how, you know, the audience can connect with your community. Yeah. Um, so Igniting Community is a YouTube channel. And there are women who uh, lead a meditation. Uh, some women will lead you into like a 15 minute uh, yoga practice. Other women are um, doing vocal lessons. Um, Joanne does joyful aging. Um, and she talks about what she does to stay healthy and fit as she ages. Um, we have a woman on there, Doris, she talks about women and glo- glo- women globally and population. Um, and that's, uh, that one is really interesting. Uh, they're all really good. Rebecca does tarot cards. I talk about all things, women, uh, real issues, not covering up anything. I get pretty real about whatever it is. The topic <laughs> this last Saturday was the power of letting go, but specifically people relationships. Uh, sometimes that is the healthiest thing you need to do. And just talking about, you know, when 
to know uh, to do that or when it's just a, a part of working on a relationship. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones. Um, the point is that there is a variety of women that come globally. And uh, Kimmy Wilson, she is out of Texas. And I wanted to mention her name because she is our, um, because you said many of your um, audience are women of color. And Kimmy Wilson does this, she will start in June. And her, if you've got female entrepreneurs, I don't know if, um, but she does these pampered boxes. And what I love is that each box a, a month um, highlights a female entrepreneur but a woman of color. Mm -hmm. So um, I read the other day that despite women of color only getting 2% of capital loans for businesses, um, the percentage of colored women owning businesses in the last decade has gone up 322%. Yeah. So you're not getting the financial assistance and you're doing it anyway. Yes. How awesome is that? And Kimmy is the one who introduced me to that whole idea of what is really happening and the power of the community coming together to support each other and why she decided to work those boxes to support specifically women of color businesses. So I'm Fantastic. super pumped. I'm super pumped to have her. I've been asking her. Um, well, I actually asked my friend who knows her. Um, hey, you want to talk to Kimmy for me? Because <laughs> I've only been watching her videos through a Facebook group that we're on. Anyway, so she starts in June. I'm totally excited. It'll be great. Um, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I just want everyone to show up. And like I said at the very beginning, it really is about creating a, a safe space where you will either see your face or hear your story and know, man, if they can, I can. If they can, I can. And we're all here. There. It's not a competition. You said that earlier, right? Like, um, I, I didn't take a seat at the table I created a table and there's enough seats for any woman who wants to join um and, and that's sounds where we fantastic sounds yeah. fantastic so the name again is ignite in community ignite in community and this is a youtube community that's right we also Wonderful. have a facebook group you could ask to join that there are um just over 1200 women there Mm -hmm. yeah sounds fantastic mm -hmm. i look forward mm -hmm. to checking out all things ignite community mm -hmm. and i so i'm so grateful that we've had you in this space is there anything else that you want to share with this audience regarding um what you want them to to keep in mind as they go forward in their lives and their businesses i believe in you i really believe in you and it it it's do you believe in yourself that's the question <laughs> choose to believe in yourself choose mm -hmm. to get support choose yeah. to join a community that resonates with you that fits with who you are yeah. Yeah. and with what your with what your needs are and also where you can plug in you know um there are so many wonderful women leaders out there and lynn frank is one of those lynn Thank everybody you. can find you find your website at lynnfrank.com is that correct yep that's, that's my yeah that's, that's my action coach and women's circle website lynnfrank.com and then ignitingcommunity.org is the website that's linked to the facebook group and the youtube channel all right so yeah. for those of you who want to connect with lynn you have that information now go ahead and check out plantyourseeds.show to see the show notes where i will put these this information and these links in so you all can connect with lynn frank lynn it has been an honor and a pleasure to have you with us i'm so grateful to be meeting you finally this is our first time meeting and yeah. i'm so grateful well sort of except for yesterday when i called you by mistake because <laughs> i have my days mixed up but um Bye. but this is our first time talking and i really appreciate everything that you're doing to support women 
and to support women leaders and women business owners. It's fantastic to hear. And I'm so excited for your community because I believe that um, you created something that's going to be, it's, this is going to be something that's going to really, really change the world. That's my opinion. So thank you. You're welcome. Like and subscribe on that note. Like, (laughs) (laughs) lady, you have the power. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity to come on and to share. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. (laughs) Thank you again. And for those of you who are, again, watching or listening, you can see the show notes and learn more and click on the links at plantyourseeds.show. You'll see this episode and be able to um, connect with Lynn and with me and with any of the other uh, show guests there. So thank you again. Have a wonderful uh, rest of your week and summer. Um, And I do hope that, uh, that things go and very surprising directions for you. I think you're going to have some really good positive uh, surprises coming soon to to you as you continue to build your pl- platform. Take care, Lynn. Thank you Thank so much. Thank you. Bye, All ladies. Right. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.